Hey, my name is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living, and it's time to turn on your inner nerd. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I am not a licensed financial advisor. Uh, I don't have any licensing. So this channel has to be taken as uh, watching Calvin trade, his ideas, how things work. So um, one other thing, this channel is not affiliated with Humble or Blocks or anything else. This is my personal project and I think there are people that will benefit from it. So that's why I'm doing it. Okay, I have a major announcement. So I'm gonna do videos at least once a week that is um, for free. I'm gonna explain where we are in the market, where we're headed, what I think is happening, and just do some, some normal uh, interactions with the market. But I am working on a subscription video channel and I am opening up my playbook. So you're going to see my live trades. You'll be able to um, either rejoice with me or be mad at me for winning or laugh at me or, uh, <laughs> or, or deal with the disappointment when things go wrong. And I will show you how a professional trader actually deals with all the emotions in the market. And I'm doing it with my money, live trading. It's going to be awesome. So if you are curious or if you're interested in seeing somebody actually do trade setups and what I'm doing, uh, this will be interesting. So stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we have some pretty interesting developments happening with Bitcoin. You can see that this morning the markets are down and it has everything to do with this. This is our this is our line that we started at the beginning. So this is this is us way back at 50,000 back up here. This was our our most recent high that we've just dropped straight down from. But look at this line, comes straight down, follows all the way through, and yesterday we closed either on it or slightly above it for the first time ever. And this morning, we are, <laughs> we've rejected from it. And that's not a giant surprise, just given the fact that the last time we were, that we touched this line, it was um, May 5th. So May, June, July, August, we've been riding under this for a long time, giving it tons of time to come down, but we've had to, uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, usually you've got to touch a thing a couple of times before you can actually get through it. So uh, the very, Another interesting thing that's at play here on Bitcoin is that we've also touched down perfectly on the 200 week moving average. So you can see that there's a lot of emotions at play here. Um, this, this 200 is becoming more and more important since we've now spent the majority of our time above it in the last two or th three weeks. And so it's becoming more of an emotional thing. Honestly, I would have expected that we would have rejected off of this harder and we probably would have had a few days down um, before we retest this line, except for the fact that this is our 200 and that we are, it is pushing us through this line. So we're, we're essentially getting squeezed uh, between this drop and the 200 and honestly, I think the 200 is more powerful. I think it is, uh, has ha more emotion. So um, I'm expecting a little bit of a bounce by the close today. And I'm betting we will have another um, small green day or a couple of days before we get back up to uh, 29.8 or something, or 23.8 thereabouts um, to retest this sort of double top situation that we have. I don't, I don't think this is going to decline and wipe us out. Um, looking at our chart with the bottom on it, you can see that this is our line here. So there's so much happening in this really tiny spot. There's <clears throat> um, our 200, which we touched perfectly. We have our 20 that we've bounced off of. We have 
our declining line here and um, and now we've got this line that has kind of pushed us up through so um, it'll be it'll be interesting to watch but I still think that the, the long-term play is bullish um, we are still waiting for the the 50 to come up and get near price action these things take time so this will be a couple of weeks but um, things are progressing just perfectly we're playing right in our playground between the 100 and the, and the 50 and we'll see if we can get um, break out of that uh, to the upside as things progress but for now we're we're uh, we're kind of struggling through a lot of things and we'll see which which of these lines uh, becomes irrelevant soon Okay, so then let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum's kind of doing the same thing, except the opposite thing has happened. We had this line of resistance. We broke down, found support on the 100, broke through yesterday. So this close yesterday was phenomenal. This, this spells a lot more upside. <clears throat> Today, we actually came back down to uh, establish this line as support and I'm betting we'll be off to the races. Um, so this is, this is really good. Um, it does take time though, but look how fast our, our 50 is coming up. Uh, once our 50 comes up um, and crosses our 100, uh, it just kind of enter, it just kind of takes our Ethereum trade and moves it into a different area. So pretty awesome. With Bitcoin and Ethereum, in the red today though a lot of the other coins are a little bit more they they, they fall even faster because they're more volatile and more emotional than um, ethereum and so i wanted to kind of tell you some of the things i i've been working on since our the last video what i did is i took the uh, entire top 100 by volume on um kucoin's futures um site their, their section for their futures trading and I took the top 100 by volume and I sorted them um, so all of these that have exited the red zone these are these are looking like Bitcoin that are between the 50 and the 100 and uh, they all the these are just between they've all exited the red zone they're playing between the 50 and the 100 they go all the way down and <clears throat> they're waiting for a breakout and then i've put the ones in here the ones that have made it above and had a close above the 100 so these are are further developed so any of these they are they are kind of showing us what is going to happen next <laughs> so you play between this zone here you finally get a close above the 100. Okay, this one is a rejection. This might move back to the red zone. <laughs> but on the whole, um, yeah, so some of these are, are uh, they're pulling back in just because today's a pretty, pretty solid day. But um, uh, these, are car these are coins that have made it into this um, section here. When, when we finally get above, the 200 then they enter um, this above the 200 section but uh, the play usually when we get above the 200 um, is we're waiting for the green zone to begin and so there are a couple of coins that are getting close um, first of all we need our golden cross we need our golden cross which um, is where there are 50 moves above the 200 so these coins are, are a lot more advanced and it's because there was enough excitement that we broke right through like we didn't spend much time going sideways we went straight up and went up into the higher levels right away so uni is, is one of those that's up here um, unified protocol this one is dipping back down below the 200 so this will be um, moving back into our above the 100 range. But the closest one we have is Qtum. 
So Qtum has has broken up so hard, and I think it's because it didn't experience the same significant uh, drop that we've had on the others. But um, we went up pretty quickly. We already crossed um, the 50 and the 100, and now we're here. The green the green zone begins when you have the 50 above the the 100 and the 100 above the 200. So we're still waiting for the 100 to cross the 200 to get our cross here. But um, normally the play for something that's this far advanced is we're looking for a short. So this one is kind of tempting for me because we've had a very, very, very straight up you know, a very intense increase in, in price, um, a fall back down, and then this is what I would classify as your bull trap. I love seeing a bull trap and then falling back to our baseline. So this is, this is tempting to short because um, we've kind of overextended ourselves. We've pulled, uh, tried to attempt another run, and we're out of gas. So this might be a perfect time to short. <laughs> um, a lot of times these will pull back into the um, Golden Cross anyway, even if they're on their way up. So um, yeah, I'm not telling you guys to do anything, but I might actually take this today. So anyway, <clears throat> it's pretty interesting. The story though is there is not a single coin in the red zone not a single one. So the entire altcoin market has moved up and has started this phase out of the red zone. There's also not a single coin in the green zone. Uh, coins in the green zone, we're looking to short and we're going to start playing on um, kind of the, the, the people that are just buying blindly at the top where there's too much excitement. But our market isn't mature yet. We haven't even seen a green zone. So we've got we've got to wait some time but we're buying in the red we're buying right when we get out of the red zone we're selling right when we get out of the green zone so we don't have a lot of trades in the table on the table so it'll be interesting um, to see how this progresses hopefully by the time we do the uh, the subscription channel um, we'll have some trades in play and we can really get some good ones these ones are more risky. I would love to see, I mean, even though it's come up a bit, this isn't even 100% gain, so there's just not a lot of movement. We want to see something that's 4 5 x It's way up there. It's all over the news. Really, everyone's all excited about it. And then we see that bull trap. <laughs> then we're in. That's when we are shorting the crap out of that because it's coming down. So this is very interesting. Um, for if you're looking for for um, places to get in, uh, look for these coins in the red zone. Hopefully, you can see the tickers. But um, look for anything that has re retreated back down to the um, 50. So this one here, like GMT, is actually fairly decent. Looks has a better opportunity at play because we're. We're getting closer to that 50. Anything that you can can buy off of the 50 or nearby is uh, likely a, a pretty decent trade because it's still young in the progression and as the, the market changes. So I'm not sure what Jasmine coin is, but it's one of these two that's <clears throat> that's right here. And um, looks like the 200 is sitting at a 100% gain. So this could be a pretty decent entry. Yeah, so some of these that have dropped down pretty good today, they're still in this red zone area. Um, there's there's a, a trade on the table. Here's our biggest loser, 7% down right now. Oh, 8%, I didn't see this. Yeah, so these that are getting squeezed, um, they could present a pretty decent uh, upside in the next week or so. So anyway, hopefully that helps you guys. Okay, I actually am going to probably make this into a separate video, but um, with today being a red day, 
today's a good day to think about um, some kind of of uh, principles of investing. And these are some of the things that have made me successful in the past. Um, part of the problem with almost every investor is that they don't understand risk management. They don't understand how to um, place trades in such a way that you don't wipe yourself out. <laughs> when people start getting bored, when people start, you know, being impatient about trying to get into a position, they've got money on the sidelines, they're just hunting for a place to put it, rather than sitting back, waiting weeks or months for the perfect entry. And so there's just a lot of problems with um, risk management, even even hedge funds. Um, you think people that had billions of dollars under management would be a little bit more, you know, that risk management would be a little bit higher on their priority list. But this is something that really distinguishes a professional trader versus uh, people that are just throwing money at stuff. And so the first thing I wanted to teach you guys about um, risk management is position size. So on Investopedia, um, it'll, it talks about, you know, how, you know, what position sizing is and, and some general ideas and takeaways about it. But what you're, what you're doing is you're, you're trying to figure out a way to make sure that when you place a trade and it goes wrong, that it doesn't take you out of the game. <laughs> And a, a newbie, a newbie, the, the most newbie thing you can possibly say is I'm all in on any single investment. So just fill in the blank. Um, I'm all in on something that you've already shown what a new investor you are, <laughs> because with that, with that type of thinking, you're going to be done investing the first time a black swan event comes your way. So... <clears throat> Um, I'm going to just scroll down just a little bit and I'm going to read one tiny little line and it's right here. Excuse me. Oh, here we are. <laughs> so before an investor can use appropriate position sizing for a specific trade, they must determine the account risk. Well, I'm going to tell you what your account risk should be, <laughs> but this typically gets expressed as a percentage of the investor's capital. As a rule of thumb, most retail investors risk no more than 2% of their investment capital on any one trade. Fund managers usually risk less than this amount. <clears throat> I will tell you right now, um, I, 99.9% .9 of the time, I never place a trade greater than 1% of my portfolio. Anything that I'm doing, it's less than 1%. And it's usually significantly less than 1%. Um, the only exception to that is um, when I'm making a, a very long-term um, position in either Ethereum or Bitcoin. I'll use um, up to 10 or 20% of my total portfolio because um, especially when we're right now at the bottom of this four-year cycle. Um, this is kind of a, I'm trying to position myself to where I'm, I'm placing a trade that should last uh, for the next three years. And these types of trades, um, super long-term, well thought out, completely engineered, uh, these ones are ones that I've managed my risk in other ways. So position size isn't the main focus of the risk management, it's other principles. <clears throat> but um, I, bet you're, uh, I bet you're wondering how this works, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got my handy dandy Excel spreadsheet and I'm gonna teach you guys uh, exactly what you wanna do. So you're like, okay, great. I've got $1,000 to invest with. <laughs> This is this is my portfolio. <laughs> well, you know, here here's the math, right? You've got uh, you got one percent of your thousand dollars, and uh, you're like, great, I can put ten dollars into any trade. Uh, that doesn't sound very exciting. 
Um, it may not be. <laughs> so I have two, <clears throat> two points to make on this. Uh, first of all, um, if, if $1,000 is the amount you're investing with, um, you can actually place trades for $10. And the cool thing about crypto is that the fee is a percentage of your total trade. And it's usually one-tenth of one percent. So um, you're usually, um, this, this would be your fee on a trade like this. It would be a, a penny. So because it's a percentage, um, it, it plays through. I, it used to be that stocks or other, other sorts of trading, they would charge you a flat fee, and then, and then that's kind of what you would deal with. But in crypto, where it's always a percentage, you actually can place trades like this. But um, I admit that this is something that almost nobody's going to do, because who's going to place $10 when they've got $1,000 at risk? <clears throat> well, this is where um, the second part of my suggestion comes in. If you have, if you are actively working and you're actively saving and you're trying to increase this number, I have $1,000 today to invest, but every month I'm trying to put in, I'm trying to put in another $100. <clears throat> well, depending on how many trades you're placing, um, you're, you're never supposed to invest more than you can afford to lose or you're uh, from a risk management standpoint you're trying to invest the amount that doesn't take you out of the game well if you're actually making your if you're adding a hundred dollars into your investments every month uh, my my personal opinion is that you can risk a um, hundred dollars on your trade <laughs> if you want to keep diversified the larger your your portfolio is the more you want to keep that down. So by the time you get to a $10,000 investment, <clears throat> if you are making a $100 donation to your uh, investment pond, uh, that's, that's where you stop. You stop at the, at the greater of what you're putting in every month at, or 1%. And um, so there are, there are times when I'm placing very small trades. Um, I've got a fair number of them going right now, but I'll teach you guys kind of how to magnify those, those returns based on, um, uh, based on the amount you're putting in and just how that all plays out. But this is serious stuff. We, risk management is not anything to take lightly. Um, if you want to take your trading to the next level, you have to figure this out. Um, everyone loves to uh, put it all on black. They they love the idea that that crypto trading is the grand casino, but it is not. It is a it is a very strategic, um, engineered, well executed uh, strategy. We don't just throw money, and and when uh, you hear of huge hedge funds making giant mistakes and trading at the wrong time, um, they have dropped the ball on risk management. <laughs> And it almost makes me wonder who on earth is is making those decisions. And you know what? It could be just young guys that came out of out of college that they got their master's degree in in finance or whatnot, and they they think they know things that they don't. And it's years of experience and winning and losing that teaches you um, all of this risk management stuff. So I'm going to try to pound this into your to your brains as as we go along. But um, this is something that I would take the time to read and internalize and figure out where your uh, risk management lies and what that dollar per trade is. Um, so you'll see that uh, for those that subscribe and watch me um, do actual live trading um, using the, the subscription channel that I'm putting on, um, you'll see that my trades are, are pretty small. And, and it might surprise you, <laughs> but um, it's, it's just, you know, we're building up a nest egg. We're in this for the long haul. And the fastest way to, to ruin your life is to make a trade that takes you out of the game, that chops your portfolio down. And so 
I mean, if you have a lot of little trades and they're all doing the same thing, you're still open up. You're, you've still opened yourself up for significant risk. So there's a mix of things you have to do to um, prevent that problem. But um, definitely something to think about. Uh, there are there are trade opportunities everywhere. It's easy to be in a hundred different positions at the same time, and so one percent is not it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you can you can you can overinvest at one percent, and so my my trades are even less than that. So I hope that that can uh, hope you can take away from that and that it helps you in your trading. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. So just remember. Keep your trade small, be patient, wait for the trade to come to you, don't get caught up in all of the hype, you guys are going to kill it.